That's a pretty good crappie right here. Not bad, not bad, not bad, not bad. Okay. Let's flip him in the boat. He's pretty in that clear water, ain't he? Come on in here. Doggone good crappie. I believe I'm going to keep him. There we go. I'm going to have a tough time catching some fish. I guarantee you in all this eel grass. But, you know, like I said, get on in there. We got to do what we got to do. That's just part of life. Woo. But I love life. <laughs> Woo. What well, good morning, folks. It's Richard Jean, the fishing machine. I tell you what. Today, I'm in the mood to catch crappie once again. One of my favorite fish, too, to target. Now, right now, the surface temperature is at 54 degrees. Uh, we're actually in the beginning of pre-spawn period here on the Tennessee River. And I'm going to show you what we're going to do today and what I'm faced with. Uh, I'm going to use a Bobby Garland bait right here and I'm probably going to start off with this red hook I don't think it makes any difference red or what color the main thing is this small profile Bobby Garland bait right here and I have it on a 132nd ounce uh, jig head I'll get it out the water is extremely clear I have a problem today I know the crappie are here or they're probably here they should be but the problem is eel grass here on the tennessee river y'all can see all this stuff right here floating and really i'm just going to have to comb comb it the best i can i'm going to get these weeds or grass all over my jig it's going to be aggravating but i know there's some crappie in here or a few should be so see that's about all i can do right there is just pick a place like a little alleyway like that and i'm gonna let it fall about two and a half three feet deep and then bring it back and i'm gonna have to use my trolling motor just as less as possible because this is ultra clear water and that's just the way it's going to be so i'm just going to have little alleys to fish like that and just bring it back very slow the grass is going to hold my jig up but that may be a good thing i just i can kind of vertical jig because of that um just one of them deals folks let's see if we can capture a few fish out of this stuff right here whoa they that's another good one not a super dog slab crappie hog head but folks that's a good one to eat darn he wants to fight he may be bigger than i think he is let's see y'all ready let's flip him in here look at there they that's a good fish right there that's a good eating size i really don't like them much bigger than that to eat to be honest with you let's put him in the bucket okay what i'm doing is ticking the top of that eel grass with that jig and they're picking that jig off of the top of it and right here that eel grass is probably about a foot off the bottom i'm just ticking the top of that grass tick tick about like you would a swim bait for bass same deal and when i don't feel it no more i'll let it fall like that i'll make contact with the grass and then bring it back keep it at that same level tick tick but there's a few fish in here now, that's a good crappie right here there's a few fish in here that's a keeper. There ain't no doubt. When I set the hook, I knew it was. Yeah, that's a good fish right there. Quit. 
flip him in here. That's a good one. Uh, Mama Sue loves me when I bring him home. That's a good fish. Let's put him in the bucket. This eelgrass is pretty thick up shallow in two, three, four feet of water or long the stems are, but as it as water gets deeper, it shortens. And it seems like these fish are five, six feet of water. Let me let me mention this. Usually when when I find fish set up this shallow and the water's this clear, I'll fish in a circle. I'll fish around that buoy right there and it's a good reference point in a circle. I'll corral them crappie up. There we go. Oh, that's a good one, folks. This might be a slab fish right here. That's a good fish right here. Either that or he's mean. Man, don't come off. This is a good one. It's a good one. There ain't no doubt about that. Come on in here, boy. I wish I'd brought my net today. Now, I'm not going to flip this one. Yeah, let's do that. He's hooked. Hook funny. That's unusual. Right there, that's a big crappie. I like them that size and bigger. There's no doubt about it. When you set the hook, it's just thump. That's a good one. Yeah, we'll fillet that up for Mama Sue. She's a good one. If you got a good woman, well, let's be good to them. All right. I've caught a lot of little bitty ones right here. Just every once in a while, folks, I'll catch a good one. But uh, the little ones is just good practice. <laughs> Setting a hook, so I don't care. I wish I knew the name of this color right here, folks. Let's look at it, but it's an excellent clear water color. It's got a monkey milk on the bottom half of it, purple glitter. It's just a good, good clear water color. I'm using a uh, Daiwa Reverus, a 1000 size, with four pound test high vis line. Now this high vis line has no effect on these crappie in this clear water. It's just a plus. For you to be able to see it, see that line go thump, like that one did. I missed a crappie right there, or I believe it was. I'm also using this seven foot uh, Canyon Creek rod right here, super ultralight. Long rod, you can really control your jig, hold your rod tip up at around a 10 o'clock position, especially in a situation like this. And you can keep up with that jig. Golly, thump. <laughs> yeah, that was a golly. When is he gonna bat? I held that jig in there, folks. I made him bite it, scattered or not. And slow of biting, we made him bite it. That's a good fish right here. That's a good one. Golly. He's fighting a little different. He just, well, that weed on him's got him disoriented. All right, let's try to flip him in. Golly, that's too big to flip in. A four-pound line, that's a sow cow right there. He's a little bit too big to eat. We done got several in here. We got seven or eight. Some of them I didn't show, but. Can't show them all. Let's let that fish go. Now, I'm gonna tell you what, that's a slab daddy right there. That's a pretty good lick right there. One thirty-second ounce jig and a little old bitty, or jig head and a little jig. 
and you end up with a big old crappie fish. That fish is right there. And I knew he was. What I done was I held my rod tip up and just held it in front of his face. Crappie don't like sunlight. They don't like sunlight at all. And in clear water, a lot of times you'll start off catching them pretty shallow and they'll just gradually move deeper uh, during the pre-spawn. But during the spawn, they'll get up in, gosh, shallow water. I've caught them up in a foot of water, depending on the water clarity. Of course, that's a different deal when they're spawning. But you can fish close to your boat in clear water as long as you don't. That trolling motor deal, you just got to get off that trolling motor. Let the wind kind of blow you around. All right, folks, once again, a great day on the water. I'm fortunate. For the next three days, it's going to rain and just muddy this water all to pieces. But we had fun today. One day at a time is what I'm saying. I want to answer a question. I get a lot of questions about this rod right here. It's real limber, long, great casting rod for situations like that, just open water fishing. It's called a Canyon Creek Super Ultra Light Rod. It's a two-piece, but I mean, it's, it's sensitive. It's real sensitive. You can launch a jig way out there, and a lot of times in clear water, that's what you need to do. Um, I bought this at Donald's. That's the only place I know that, that carries them. I'm sure you can you could order one from somewhere, but that's where I got the rod. And I'm sorry I didn't reply, but there's so many things <laughs> yeah, to do on the channel. And thanks to y'all for supporting this channel. God bless each and every one of y'all. Hey. <laughs> Doggone it. Remember, go fishing when you can, but all this good. Hurry.